It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's our goal. Hey! It's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Breaking Bread with Tom Papa. If you can see me, you would see me with a weird headset on in a strange hotel room in a big city with the Empire State Building somewhat visible behind me. Uh, this is how this one's going down. So my special, What a Day, on Netflix comes out today. Finally, this is the time that my special finally hits the air. We've worked on it. We've talked about it. We've done all the things. And now finally we push this little paper boat out into the rapids and let nature take its course very excited so i am back in new york uh running around doing a lot of press for it doing a whole bunch of shows and then going to austin to do tom segura's podcast and then going up to uh chicago to do wait wait don't tell me and just trying to spread the word that the special is coming out so you guys, of course, are the first to know and get the inside scoops. And I am back in New York doing this. I was here and recorded with my buddy Stavros Halkias, who's a very funny comedian who opened for me at the beginning of his career. And now he is a legit headliner and is having a really great successful run uh, as his as his own as his own guy. And Stavros and I as you'll see in this podcast, we uh, we have a good history together. I adore him. He's very funny. He's very honest, very legit comedian. And we got to uh, hang here when I was here last week. Uh, I was able to snag him and do the interview. And now I have gone about my life and did a whole bunch of gigs and did a thing. And then all in this one week, and I have come back to New York and this is where I am uh, doing just literally the intro for the Stavros Stavros uh, interview. So I am back in this hotel downtown in New York and uh, happy to be with you all and hope you're enjoying your holidays. Tonight's, tonight's podcast is brought to you by my good friends at Helix. Helix mattresses you've heard me talk about helix before how long have you been on your dirty old mattress how long has your sleep been crappy well helix sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences the helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses including a collection of luxury models a mattress for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made for kids helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash papa. It's what I sleep on, a Helix mattress. With Helix, better sleep starts now. So as I'm running around doing all of this press in uh, New York City, it is just a jewel box at this point. It really is just... You cannot beat it. I mean, look, I haven't. The only suspicion I have in my mind is that if you go to Europe and if you go to, let's say you go to uh, parts of Germany, Copenhagen, there's got to be Christmas towns where they do those little villages and you get the unique chocolates and the things. And I'm sure it's comparable but i i gotta think the scope the scale of new york the added crassness of america like i'm sure you get like nice little gingerbread houses and you get nice little quaint little places with a pint of guinness i'm sure there's all those nice things exist but are they gonna sustain you for a week or you're gonna have to get out of there and get to the next country 
you could spend a month. You can spend a Christmas month, a Hanukkah month in Manhattan, and you're not going to run out of stuff to do. Every block is a new adventure on the same block. If you just turn the direction and walk the other way, it's a whole nother experience. I know I'm biased. I know it's my favorite place, but I'm telling you, it can't be beat. And I'm not, look, I'm not, not this renegade. I'm not this, I'm not going rogue here. It's a reason why millions of people flock to New York during the holidays. It's a special place and it is all lit up and the bars are just perfect. The restaurants are perfect. The people on the street, perfect. Now, am I rolling around in Times Square? No. I'm on the Upper East Side. I'm downtown in Soho. I'm in the West Village at the Comedy Cellar. I know what I'm doing. But if you just give yourself a a, a little bit of an education on your way into this place during the holidays, you will not be denied. I'm not telling you go to Times Square on New Year's Eve. I'm not telling you to stand outside in the cold and pee in a plastic Poland spring bottle. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is if you have a chance to come through New York during the holidays, do it. If you can't, yeah, I'm sure your places are great too. And then you turn inward. You go and you do your little uh, your little short run in your towns. And then you go inside and you uh, you get busy baking. We only have one more podcast left for this year, uh, for next week. And then we're going to take a break for a week uh, or two weeks. I'm not sure how the math works. Um, so next week, I will tell you exactly what I am planning for the Feast of the Seven Fishes for Christmas Eve. That is an Italian-American thing that I have uh, been doing now probably for 15 years. It's a great meal. It's a great thing to put out. And also the precarious Christmas wreath that my wife's mother baked for her when she was a child. And I've been trying to replicate. And I get close. And look, I know I'm never going to pull it off. I'm never going to be exactly what mom made. There's no way. There's It could be exactly the same. And because mom was involved, it will not be the same. But I make a good effort at it. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit about what I'm planning and how I'm going to go and attack that uh, next week. I was baking a ton of bread until I came back on this last trip of the year. I was so tired on the plane, my friends. I was so tired. On my return to New York yesterday, where I was, I planned this uh, family Christmas party every year for my family. I'm one of 21 grandchildren, and I try and assemble all those people who now are parents themselves, some even grandparents. And I put this giant group together with my help of my cousin. And uh, we do it every year. And uh, so I hustled back here to New York to have a day before press and do the thing. I was so tired on the plane that I was asleep on the plane. And you know that moment right when you're about to wake up and you don't know where you are, you haven't opened your eyes yet, but you're conscious and you're not sure exactly where you are. I literally thought to myself, this is on the plane. This is upon landing. I woke up and I thought, oh man, I got to get to the airport and get to New York. <laughs> that's how tired I've been, my friends. But it's all good. Very exciting. The special is now out. Go and check it out. Let me know how you enjoy it. Hit me up on social media. Let me know uh, that I made you laugh as much as I intended. And if uh, I didn't, you can let me know that too. Uh, let's get to it. Stavros Halkius, a great comedian, comes from Baltimore. Funny Greek fellow. His mom gives me cookies every year. We worked with each other. He was just starting out, and I was looking for somebody funny, and somebody sent me a video of him in his rawest, earliest form, and I knew he was great. And I'm so excited that he is now having success on his own, and uh, I got to spend some time with him, and now you get to spend some time with him as well. Enjoy Stavros Halkius. 
so good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Tommy. I can't believe... Uh, now, I just want to be clear. Yes. I didn't ask you on the podcast because it's Christmas cookie time. Right. You you know you get the cookies I, either way. I Yeah. I feel like I'm... <laughs> I don't want to assume, but I feel like I'm grandfathered in. You're grandfathered. you cookies for life, the papa. Cookies for life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your mom, for our listeners... Uh, I should get them out of the bag to show the Stavros' people. mom makes uh, baked cookies. Amazing yes. Christmas cookies. She's the best. And sends them every year, probably for like the last five years. Yeah, yeah, Maybe yeah. even more. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Uh Because when we were on the road together and we would do stuff and then we just love to eat and whatever. Of course. So I look forward to it every year. <laughs> yes, yes, And I yes. will admit, I was getting a little nervous that we hadn't seen each other <laughs> from the pandemic. Oh, is the that thing. what this text is about? Refreshing like, the cookies right around the holiday sure season. just sure that your mom knows. <laughs> I think you got them through the pandemic, didn't you? <laughs> I got them. You got them every yeah, year. Yeah. See that every see year. That? Yeah, and um, and you know we would work on the road together a yep. lot. But yep. you know you're kind of a big star now on your own. You're doing a lot We're of your getting own there. Gigs. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Do you still need opening gigs? No. Yeah. Sorry. See. Yeah. We're. Yeah. 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 So this is the. T- yeah. <laughs> so you've it. got. We've got to do each other's podcast. <laughs> to make sure I get cookies. To make sure your bloodline gets pot gets cookies. And <laughs> it's passed down. <laughs> yeah. To your daughters. No, my daughters will be like, "What? Where are the ones we with the powder on them from last year?" Oh, uh, that was. He's a headliner now. <laughs> he does his own shows. He has his own fans. He's, Stavros has grown up. No, but it, honestly, it was. It was. I had so much fun on the road, and it was. I remember the first time we worked together. You do absolutely. It was big, big for me because this was in Annapolis, Annapolis, Maryland. Uh huh. And it was already kind of a cool. It's a kind of a cool theater. It was the Ram's Head. Theater. Right. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm doing like I'm featuring here and there. I'm doing Baltimore stuff, but right. I was. I had worked with somebody else, and they were cool, but they weren't like super warm. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> and it was kind of like my first. It was my first like. Kind of bigger, th- not like a comedy club. It was like a little bit of a theater situation there at the Ramshead thing. Is it shitty to ask the name? I don't want to say the name. All right. Yeah, yeah. They're nice. They're a nice person, but it was uh-huh. just like, you know. Ryan Hamilton. It was Ryan Hamilton. <laughs> it was Bobby, Robert Kelly. He was, a, I worked with this other guy, and he was just a real piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> um, and anyway, there were two green rooms. Right. And it was like. That person just had their own green room, and then I was in the other one. Uh-huh. And then I remember you came in, and I'm in the shitty green room. I've learned my place as the opener, as the local opener. I'm just waiting, just not even looking. You know, no TV, no, no water. <laughs> just yeah, 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 yeah. Just drinking from the, going to the bathroom and drinking off the tap. And uh, you're just hanging out for a while. I'm like, oh, he's coming to introduce himself. That's really nice. And then you're just like hanging out, and you're like. This green room kind of sucks. Should we go to the good one? <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, we should." <laughs> you know, I, I just moving I, on up. I was just ready to la- not make eye contact with you, and you're the best because it was like you know, it's funny. I didn't know you personally, right? And I knew your act, and I was a fan. But it's also like, you know, I'm a fucking dirtbag. I'm 23 years old, uh-huh. living in a you know, three hundred dollar. <laughs> A month rent in Baltimore City. You were still friends. in Baltimore, right? Still in Baltimore. I yeah. drove up. It was a local gig, right? And I mean, my my act now is still dirty, but at the time, <laughs> it was like I was like, he picked me yeah. to <laughs> open for him, and I'm like, so you know, the thing about eating pussy, and it's just like a bunch of nice families, you know what I mean? And I was oh. like, he's gonna hate me, and you you fuck, you were great. You love. I think you got a kick out of it, and your fans did too, because the thing yeah. is, people have these perceptions it was, yeah. where it's like. Just because you wear a jacket on stage, <laughs> you can't, you know. But it's like, yo, you used to be the dirtbag. You were 23. <laughs> yeah. All your fans used to, they might be wearing jackets now, <laughs> but they used to live with their dumb friends. And you Yeah, know, everybody it knows. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of nice. And, it was, and we had t- so much fun on the road. That's awesome. And there was only one time anyone ever said, what's up with your opener? You know, you know he's too dirty. And you took that bitch to task. It was awesome. Did I really? It was so cool. You were like, I don't remember that. It was so cool. They did it live in person. It was at the DC Improv, uh-huh. and some like uptight, stuck up, you know, DC yeah. lady. I'm telling my, you know, I'm telling all my 
you know, my dick is little jokes. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, doing, I'm doing four minutes of fat jokes, five minutes of my dick is small jokes. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then we're coming closing with the closing, uh, closing with the pussy with eating, eating right. Yeah. I'm good at eating pussy jokes. <laughs> yeah, to throw that out there just in case there's any divorces, but, but in a very classy way. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing my classiest pussy. Eating. Did that ever work? By the way, did it pe- worked all the time. It did with Bobby more than because I feel like Bobby has a, a few more degenerates. Yeah. in his you know in his in uh, his audience in his audience, but. Boy, did it. It was great. Yeah, because whenever a comedian has a joke like that, like, oh, poor little me, but yeah. I just want to please you. And I just want to I just want to go down on you forever and ever. It's like that's if that joke sticks around in the act, it's oh, because yeah. someone's coming up after the act. Like, absolutely. Yeah. I start, you know, you only do comedy. I anyway to to fuck to have, like, you know, to get attention from women. So it was like right. that was very when I was featuring, I was like, got to close on a big pussy-eating number. <laughs> so anyway, I do that, and this lady comes up to us after, and I've, you know, we've been working together for months at this point. I wasn't worried about anyone, and she's yeah. just like, how, this guy's so vulgar, This and you just really? lit her up, dude. It was awesome. I don't remember you were that like, at all. You were like more harsh than I was even expecting. <laughs> oh, really? You were like, lady, this is the fucking, I mean, you were like going at her. It was You were a nice at first, and then... She tried. She wouldn't she had, stop. She wouldn't stop, and you just lit her up. I was like, "That's my guy." Ah, that's good. That's I'm my proud friend. of cookies me. for life. For yeah. that fucking guy. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. Let's wrap up this podcast right now. Just anyway. text me what you've been up yeah. to. Wow, that's good. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, and it was it was a really fun run. And there was um, well, you just always made me laugh. I'm like, yeah. great I, hangs. I, I do have this thing where uh, through the years where I work with people and. I just work with whoever makes me laugh. That's totally. The only, that's the only metric. Yeah. And um, half go on to headline and do their thing, and you don't work with them because of that. And others I don't work with because they end up not doing comedy anymore. Right, 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 right. right <laughs> but I just right, love them so right, much. Right, right, right. And it's but just like good. they make me laugh, yeah. but for their, so, you know, just never really of course. kind of catches. But, yeah. You know, what can you do about That's it? That's what you want, a good hang. Yeah. We had great hangs. And um, e- even though your mom showers me with love, I've never met your family, but you actually came to Father's Day once. I did. I did. <laughs> I had Father's Day with the Papas. <laughs> yeah, when we played up in Nyack, New York. Yes, that was so fun. And we yeah. had to go to... Why did you... Did we have a show that night? We had a show that night, I oh, think. Oh, I think we did a Sunday. Because it was a Sunday, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. did a Father's Day. Now, maybe yeah. they tied it in like Tom Papa's on Father's Day. Something like that. Yeah. And it was like... So we... I was yeah. like, all right, yeah, why not? It was like a nice Father's we Day We had to lunch. have had a show or you would have been... Yeah, I would have left. You would have left. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Have I didn't stay the extra night to have Father's Day brunch with you and your dad. My dad and my <laughs> sisters and the, yeah, yeah. everybody. And by the way, and everybody loved you. They still ask about. Oh, it. I love the Papas. They were great, great, great hang. But it was funny that one in specific. It's like the person who least cared about that was your father. You know what I mean? Like everyone is like, it's Father's Day. Your father wanted you to yeah. out on the couch. All right. Clearly, all right. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this. We're parking here. Spending this on this. All right. All right. We, really? We're going to get dessert, too? Yeah. Okay. You can probably get that at home. <laughs> I just spent a couple of weeks with them, and yeah, he's he has not changed He's at the all. best. He was great. Yeah, from day one. Just non-plot, <laughs> constantly doesn't really just... Why are we doing Even this? Even keel. Why are we out? All yeah, right. If it yeah. makes you happy. Yeah. Right, we'll sit here. Just wanted to hang, and then, like, the only time he lights up is when he talks about motorcycles. <laughs> right. He's like, he can talk about that, and, like, <laughs> the joy, the, like, a little kid on Christmas. Yeah. Everything else, he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> just make it, like, he's in an elevator. Uh, right. <laughs> like, that's the- <laughs> Yeah, it's so brutal. No. All right. So, well, I now if you had done my podcast yes. in uh, in Los Angeles, I would have baked you bread. Someday we'll get there. We'll get there at some point. Um, so today, I instead stopped off at this Italian uh, sandwich shop mm. that uh, I'm listening is really good. Okay. And um, Nicole and I already ate one of them. <laughs> okay, great. And <laughs> it's literally bigger than her head. <laughs> I love it. It's made on focaccia. Oh. Very simple. You need the focaccia. So though. good. Um, let me see what I have left. Yeah, please. Okay, so I have a, I have the summer one. Mm-hmm. That's not what you had, is it? No, you had the boss one. We had the same one, Nicole, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, we had the same one. Okay. So what this one is the, you could either have straight salumi. Okay. Which is just very simple. Sure. Or you could have uh, the summer. 
mm. which is prosciutto, mozzarella, tomato, and basil. Oh man, I, I got to look at them. This can't be. I can't. Yeah, this, this has to you need be more vis- information. This has to be visual. Okay, <laughs> I'll show you. This is the summer. Oh, it looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. Looks pretty good. We had one that had that was heavy on prosciutto. Also, the prosciutto is insane. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what's this guy right ours, here? I have to say though, ours had um this truffle cream on it. Mm, big, big, big truffle big, fan. I just hit or miss. A truffle either yeah. really elevates something. Or it just feels like you know what I mean. Yeah, like, it's a, it's intense. Sticks it, yeah. It's really it can intense. overpower a sandwich. Yeah, this one um, I took a bite out of it. Okay, this is straight mo- uh, mortadelle. Oh, I am a big mortadella fan. Are you? I am. I might have to do a little sampler. Um, <laughs> little column A, little column B. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this one is straight oh. salami. Oh my god, salumi. Salum. I am more. I'm leaning. I need a little mortadella just to fucking. Wet the beak, uh huh, and then you know. Maybe well, a little I'm gonna give this one to you. I only took one bite out of okay. it. Okay, <laughs> well, come on, you could eat around. That. I'll eat around, <laughs> but it's uh, legit. This place is legit. I'm gonna just try some for the people. Al antico, al antico, al antico venado, al antico venado. Oh yeah, al antico venado, straight mortadelle. Right? You can't go wrong that's with that. That's good stuff right there. Yeah, that's good stuff. Mm, Maroon. And I just start, I didn't just start, but in the last couple of years, started messing around with focaccia. And that's all they make. So these sandwiches come out square. Mm. And they just, uh, yeah. Well, as soon as uh, they let me in early, so mm. I got to kind of hang in there. Bread and, celebrity. Yeah, bread celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then by the time it opened, as soon as they opened the door, there was 20 people there. Wow. Yeah. So this, this is, is a uh, fucking good legit. sandwich. I'm so, gonna save this. There you go. What happened to your finger? <laughs> <laughs> it was an onion caramelization accident. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What happened? <laughs> well, what was this onion? I'm doing? big on caramelizing onions these days. Uh, you are. You know? Yeah, big, big on it. Uh huh. It's a nice, healthy topping. Right. You know, I'm making a lot of turkey burgers, trying nice. to like stay off the mayo and shit. <laughs> Get a caramelized onion. A lot of flavor, a little fucking yeah. mayo, a little Greek yogurt. You can make a little sauce that way. Uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I just I'm I'm working with a mandolin now to get them to get the sizes. Oh, the uniform. slicey, the exactly. slice, the, yeah. And so because that, oh, that thing is nasty. It cut like a str- just a I saw. Like a, I took, oh. I picked up a piece of my finger ah. and threw it away. Yeah, oh. just I could commit a crime with this finger right now. My fing, my prints are not fully ah. on. Yeah, it's brutal. Oh so, man, that slicey thing, brutal. Stuff. Yeah, the mandolin. It's I, I use it for um, potatoes, mm-hmm. slicing potatoes. Oh, that's another good one. But you man, want a uniform, you can't you want be absent-minded cut. about it. You, you. This is first thing in the morning. Oh, I was brutal. like, let me, let me just. Let me not get a bagel. I have some leftover turkey burgers. They were good. Oh. I'll caramelize an onion. Ah. I'll, I'll do my chores while they caramelize. Oh. Fucking first thing in the morning. I'm like, ah! ah! But to be clear, what's first thing in the morning for you? It was, <laughs> I was nine, nine o'clock. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was definitely I had a meeting. Say noon. I had a meeting before this. And oh. I, had to get, I had to hit the gym, Tom. Got to get back Hit the in. gym. Yeah. Well, I'm not... I'm not Speaking out of turn, but you don't look like you've been hitting the gym. <laughs> yeah, lately. you could be strong. <laughs> you know, you be str- look what a look at the Mister. Look at the fucking strongman competitions. Some of the fattest guys you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <They've> got, <laughs> I have gotten strong. <clears throat> well, you've always been stronger. talking. You've always been talking about dialing it in and yes, losing weight. You kind of life. yeah. So you just go up and down, right? Up and down. Of yo yo. Lost a lot of weight during the pandemic. Right. And then it was like, let's get back on the road. Let's make up all the money we lost. And I was just touring. I mean, I've basically been touring with a month break a couple times mm-hmm. um, since the pandemic. You know, really, it's been, it's been nonstop. And when you go, uh, do you come home or do you just go? I do a little bit of both. If I'm on the, I, like, I thought it would be easier to stay healthy if I don't come back and forth and limit my travel. Uh huh. Huge mistake. When I was on the <laughs> West Coast, it was just like it didn't feel like it felt like a vacation the whole time. Yeah. You know? And I was there during the winter last year, my birthday. So you do week after week. Week after week. And I would go to L.A. Instead right. of coming back to New York, I was like, oh, I'll get some 
work done. It's like, no, I didn't get shit done. I had an awesome Airbnb, <laughs> right. getting fucked up. I'm trying to fuck <laughs> as many girls in LA as I can Well, before I come back to New York. No, it was great. I had a little yeah. grill. I'm making lamb chops. I'm just like, <laughs> I was like, it'll be good. I'll get chicken breast. I'm, I'm getting like, you know, I was, it was great. It was a great year, but I also got fat as shit. I literally was like, I was where I needed to be mm -hmm. during the pandemic and it was, yeah. It was, and then as soon as the road, yeah. and then I was like, this year will be nice, and then is be uh, you know my things will slow down a little bit. Uh -huh. It'll be good, and then like you know I can't complain because my special did really well, and things have gone really well, and I yeah. just have to. I'm staying on the road, and I'm adding shows and all this stuff. Is that what clicked it for you? Was it the special? Because I mean, you were always progress. It's always yeah. hard to say because you're progressing, and yeah. you know things are happening over the years for sure. But the that was a nice bump. It was a huge bump. I mean, the podcast, the old podcast helped. Yeah. Um, got me to kind of start headlining. And, you know, I would sell out a Saturday late show and that kind of thing. You know, they were good weekends. Yeah. But just the special, and even more so than the actual special, the lead up to it where I just started clipping, doing little clips. I saw Sam doing it. I saw Nimesh doing it. Yeah. And it helped them a lot. Mark was doing it. And I put those up as kind of like, well... Eh, I'm releasing a special. I only have 20,000 subscribers. Maybe I'll get a couple here or there. Yeah. I went from 20,000 to like 300,000 off of those. And it was like, I still don't understand what algorithm I hooked on to. And this was it's on Instagram? Instagram, YouTube, and uh, TikTok. Right. And that really, and then it was like. It's funny. Everybody says TikTok that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because yeah, yeah, it is yeah. very valuable. It's make, yeah. But because of what it is, everyone goes, TikTok. Well, I I can't even be on it. It's literally like crack. It's like, you know. Yeah. I would lose hours of my time. And then I, I literally now, I have my friends post everything. I don't, I hired right. one of my buddies to run social media. Oh, that's good. And I was like, I can't be near this. Yeah. And they know you so well. My algorithm I is know. all, it's sandwiches, and then it's like <laughs> girls with huge tits working out. Because that, that, it just combined like everything that I want is just like a beautiful woman getting in shape and just big ass titties. <laughs> like I, I, my, my algorithm is hilarious. And then like cute babies, because they're like, you're getting older, don't you want a family? <laughs> it's like, it's lit. and I was like, yes, I want all this. I want, I want to, like, and it's just all your basics. And I was like, I can't be on this fucking app. Oh, anymore. that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is crazy. So it really clicked, and and it that's really where all did. your all yeah. your fans started. But after the special, it was like things went from the you know four shows a weekend to eight shows a weekend. Wow, and, that's great. And then now we're trying to do some theater stuff, so that's going well. But yeah, it was like so. I thought this would be a slow. You know, I was like, yeah. I don't want to podcast anymore. I you know, I kind of I stopped doing uh, my my other podcasts, and then it was like I just kind of had had you know five months of just touring and it's yeah. been really crazy but but then you're like ah a podcast is valuable because you make these fans and they're going to want to check in week yeah. to week so so, so you, i'm starting a new podcast again too so it's like oh, that's I, good it was like i was like oh i'll take it easy on touring and i was going to take the whole summer off uh -huh. but then it was like two months off became six weeks became three weeks became like yeah 15 days you know and it was so I know. so i, I have know. to find us but you know i'm on vacation right now right <laughs> This literally is my vacation. Is coming into New York, doing Hilarious. one show tonight, Hilarious. and two podcasts during the day. Yeah, yeah. There's, it's a sickness. Yeah, but no. also the work is. You're so grateful to get the work after but years sure. of not getting it. No, it's you don't now want to let it go. Well, that's the thing. It's like we've crossed over my dreams. Uh, I this was like I wanted to headline. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and now no. I'm now it's like. See, like my agent will be like, "Hey, this theater is selling well. We should add another." I'm like, "Another one? <laughs> You're right? What?" I was like, "Shit!" I'm just like, "I mean, okay." I still don't believe it, right? Because I haven't done my own theater yet. Yeah, it'll <laughs> kick in when it's like that first theater show, and I'm like, "I guess, I guess this isn't some huge prank." Looking through the curtain. Yeah, just, no. are they really there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. So. But yeah, exactly. It's like one of these things with entertainment, especially where you're like you work you work your whole life, yeah, and then it starts happening. And I'm I kind of feel like I can't like it'll they'll tell you when it's time to stop. Yes. There will be a time where Absolutely. it slows down. Absolutely. And I just don't I don't want to be the thing that slows me down. Right. So, you know, That's a good way to put it. It always everybody's career kind of dips and whatever. And when it dips, great. I'll be ready for it. I'll be ready yeah. for a little time off. But right now, I just feel like I gotta. You know. I saw Elton John's final show at Dodger oh, Stadium. Oh, Dodger Stadium. And 
It was great. I was like, why haven't I been watching? Why haven't I been going yeah. to shows for 10 yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, his thing is where he's quit like a bunch of times of and he course. keeps coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he's up there talking about, uh, you know, why he's going to quit, you know, for his family. 76. I mean, yeah. 76. Hilarious. And uh, he's talking and he's reading off in the, in the crowd. People hold up signs. This is my 50th show. This is wow. my um, 180th Holy show. Holy shit. I was like, "How man, how many shows has he done? And yeah. we looked it up on uh, on the Googles. Mm-hmm. And concerts. This is... Not even they like can that. only count concerts, of right? The, the, all the other appearances are not going to be in this. But he's done 3,800 and something concerts. Crazy. Insane. It's a big number. I know. I know. That is a big number. Huge. Yeah. No, I mean, I was thinking about it. I'm like, fuck. It's like, because we don't just go, I mean, I'm not comparing comedy to fucking Elton John. Right? No, but, you, <laughs> but yeah. But, but it is like, you know, you go to a you go to a weekend and it's like, that's five shows minimum. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or four shows, let's say. And yeah. It's like, you do 50 cities, that's right there. That's 200 shows. Yeah. Or, or more. You know, or more in a year. I know? think you have to count every time someone says your name and you grab the mic. <laughs> right, right. Really? Oh my god! You're because right. I mean, think about spots all the spots. And, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, every time that you have that little thing of, you know, you can't count it just on how, how many family outings you've ruined by leaving. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> There's hundreds of those too. Yeah, I think you have to count it the yeah. other way. Yeah. So, my friends. This is cuddle time, right? This is uh, hibernation time. This is time when you're spending in your bed. Uh, take a look at your bed. When's the last time you were really happy? When's the last time you thought maybe we should be looking into something better? When's the last time you thought, I would love to get a new mattress, but how do I start? Where do I go? What do I do? Well, Helix Sleep is your premium, premium mattress brand that I sleep on, and let me tell you how they roll. You take this sleep quiz, this Helix sleep quiz, and you put in all your information and you tell them exactly what you want. You tell them exactly what your partner wants if you sleep with another person. And they will give you a personalized mattress that is shipped straight to your door free of charge. It just shows up and you pop it open and you have this brand new mattress. They'll give it to you for a 100 night risk-free trial we did it we took it we found out quickly after never discussing it that we have different needs my wife and i and she likes it very firm like ping pong table firm i like it more soft like feathery just like like a like a one of those ball things at the mcdonald's where you just just fall and just it, there's no support that's closer with closer to what i want and they sent us a mattress that satisfied both of us and we've been sleeping on it ever since it's american made it comes with a 15 and 15 year 10 to 15 year warranty and remember you get to try it for 100 nights risk-free if you don't like it they'll uh ship it back at no cost to you Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. Go on the website, look it up, uh, helixsleep.com. Spend some time, check it out, feel it around, feel it around, and uh, see if you want to make the commitment. And you can even take the quiz without committing and just see what they're offering and then make your decision. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows to our listeners. So go to helixsleep.com slash papa with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Thank you to Helix for being a sponsor all year long. I'm happy to talk about it. I don't talk, I turned down a lot of products, but I haven't turned down Helix. Um, That's fucking wild. Yeah. But uh, so when you're out there touring and uh, there's no way that you can stay in shape. It's hard. I mean, every tour starts with a lot of willpower. Yeah. And then it's like you get lonelier. You get like it's all the in, you know, I'm going on well, I'm going on this stuff. And you're tired. And you're tired. And the each tour I've made a little bit of a I've improved a little bit, right? So it's like the first tour back, 
I went fucking crazy. I fucked yeah. my whole life up. Yeah. I'm still digging myself out of that hole. Are you? But now it's like, and then I went and worked out with my brother, uh-huh. and I got some habits. He gave me a, a workout that's like, you know, you skip a couple days. It's not the end of the world. You can hop back in. It's not super advanced. So that's kind of what I'm doing. You know, he's yeah. got a little program for me. Nice. And the eating was, you know, I have to get, that's obviously, I'm still struggling a little bit with that, but I stayed sober this whole tour. Which oh, really? really helped mitigate things where it's like, God knows what it would have what it would have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like it would have been twenty Once pounds you drink, more. Yeah. You start drinking, you get high. I mean, for me, getting high is even worse because oh, then you want to eat more. Of course. So I've stayed sober. And then for this one, I've just realized that it's like you can't just trust that you'll find the healthy stuff. And so I was talking right. to Mateo, you know Mateo Lee. Yeah, of course. And uh he does like a meal delivery service. And on he, the road? And on the road. And you do like you have them delivered to your hotel. You have a, oh. and you know it's like you know they're they're good they're they're not like gourmet shit it's like stuff you microwave but it's still uh-huh. like good food you know oh. and it's like if you do that and okay you'll go you'll go to one breakfast but who gives a fuck right. that's one breakfast yeah the problem is late at night when you don't have shit to eat yeah you come home you warm up a little something you're good to go oh. you get some yogurts you know man I the eating late at night after a set yeah. Is so evil, and it's because there's nothing more joyful in the it's world. The best thing you in deserve the it. You've worked hard. Just you yeah. just you're, you're you're not. It just it's, it's over. It's because so, we have to be anxious. That's the worst, hardest thing about comedy. You go to a city, and it's not fuck it. You know, you you you're not done till one a.m. Yeah. So you wake up. You're not. You're a little on edge even at breakfast. Right. You know, it's like because <laughs> you have you, a show that you night. can kind of enjoy you can kind of enjoy breakfast. Yeah. But then it's like two o'clock rolls around, you're like, you see it. Yeah. Seven thirty is not that far away. You right. gotta start getting ready. That's right. And then it's like, you know, now you're worried about that. And there's just the only part of the day that you are completely done is one AM. Because at that point you are that is the point where you are farthest away from the next from the show. next show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. And that's yes. your only time. Yeah. And then to just make yourself go to bed and not eat anything. And you're amped up for yeah. the show. But I've been pretty good about not eating like at night. Like, and the other night I just walked up. I was at home and just walked up to the kitchen, and my daughter was walking up too. I'm like, "Where are you going? Like, I'm going to get a snack." Uh oh. I was like, "Runs in the family." <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "We just sat there and ate like bread, oh. toast, and uh, sun chips, <sighs> and it wasn't even like that bad." Of course. But it's the ritual, I hadn't man. eaten that late in a long time, and. The joy Ugh. from doing it. I was like, why shouldn't I? That's what you start saying. Totally. Yourself, why can't I eat like It's this not stuff? that bad. It starts innocent. Yeah. You're like, well, I have 400 calories left. Yeah. You know, I'm tracking my stuff. I can I can treat myself <laughs> to a little bit. And then you just tack on a little, an extra spoon full yeah. of peanut butter. It's like, it's healthy. Or a little smoked salmon. <laughs> and then it's like, it just goes each time. You tack on one more thing, <sighs> one more thing. And by the end of it, you're just ordering Chinese food. <laughs> you know, it's like in three weeks, it's like for fucking, for, you're, you're ordering four different entrees just for you because you want a little taste of everything. <laughs> right. You're like, I'm not going to eat it all. I just that was taste. another good meal that we had was uh, when we were at the Comedy Works in Denver, yes. right, right when weed became legal. Yes. And you came out with your buddies. Oh, th- unbelievable. That was so funny. That's I had one of the craziest weed-induced panic <laughs> attacks of my life. You did? Where the right before, because my phone died. Do you remember that? Right. And I got, we were, there was like some kind of room situation <laughs> where I accidentally, oh, yeah. they gave me your room, and yeah. I was like, this room is too nice. <laughs> Something's off. But then my phone died, and I was like, and I'm on, I had never done edibles because it was like you couldn't buy them in the store. I I must have taken like 200 milligrams, which now, now would fuck me up after 10 years of taking then, not knowing what I'm doing. And my my friends were even higher. You were so, they were so (laughs) young and happy. They couldn't believe, like, because it was the only place in the country that was legal. And they had just come to Disneyland for the first time. Uh, They were so overjoyed. Stoned out of, stoned out of our minds. Overjoyed. It was incredible. But then we ate at that, uh... At that Greek restaurant, that was right next meal. to the Comedy Works. Yeah, that, that place is legit. Good meal, yeah. Yeah, so especially for like, you know, Comedy Works is like in the one south is like it's in a strip mall situation. It's yeah. a nice one, but it is. Yeah, it's definitely the best Greek food you could get in a situation <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. You know, it's not Astoria. No, you know what I mean. But it was a real was Greek good. family. Real Greek family, really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely hit the end. How does you know. Astoria's 
food um, match up with yours growing up? It's good. It's good. I mean, it's up there. Yeah, for sure. I would. I would put them. There's a couple of really good spots in Baltimore. Uh huh. The there's way more here. Baltimore. There's two that I could that I think could survive. Yeah. In Astoria, but in Astoria, there's like you know maybe like. Hundreds. Eight, <laughs> eight super good ones, you right? Know? And then it's like everything else. Exactly, just kind of like. But I will say the best Greek food I've had outside of Greece is actually in Melbourne, Australia. Uh-huh. Actually, has the most Greeks outside of Greece. Really, you don't think about it, no, because you always think we have all these Greeks on the East Coast, yeah, and diners on the Midwest, yeah, Montreal, and apparently, yeah, yeah, yeah. But apparently, there's more. And honestly, yeah. insane. This place, Stalactites, I think, yeah. Free free promo if you're if, if, if you're going if you're going to Melbourne insane really yeah was your mom a great cook when you were growing up she was a good cook and she was also she literally worked at a Greek restaurant so it wasn't even her uh, food it was like you want to talk about like I was thinking about this actually this like psychologically what how my life maybe I have no choice because uh-huh. my mom was a was a Greek she was a waitress at a Greek restaurant and she would bring home leftovers Saturday nights, uh-huh. right? Because it was the busiest night, and she would usually bring some calamari, some, you know, surf and turf, just great, right? Yeah. But you had to stay up till she came home at midnight. <laughs> so I'm a little fat child watching Saturday Night Live. <laughs> My Saturday nights are comedy, uh-huh. and then a woman I love bringing me <laughs> fried foods. And now I'm thinking, like, I'm just trying to recreate that every night. No- I'm the comedy. <laughs> I'm get the fried foods. It's not a woman I love, but it is. It's only there. I, can, I, I am I trying can, to spend them with a woman. I can talk myself into loving her for a yeah, little while. Yeah, I, I love her for the next couple hours. <laughs> yeah, I could see a future. And it was like, literally, I'm like, this is the most Freudian shit. It's like, yeah. was that, were yeah. those Saturday nights just... Uh-huh. Did they doom me? They, yeah. Did they just they, doom me? They gave do- you everything. And it was are- the blueprint. Yeah. My whole life is that now. It sounds like heaven. Yeah. I think it would be more heaven than hell. It's great. But again, the unhealth. If yeah. Heaven is the, how I live on the road. Right. And you get healthier the more you eat. That's what heaven is. Yeah. Like every every <laughs> wing is a six pack. It's like I did. It's like four minutes on the elliptical. I would be the most jacked man. I'd be Mr. <laughs> Universe. <laughs> you know what I mean? It Can you be- eat wings after... Eight o'clock at night and sleep. If you're fucked up enough, yeah. If you're if you're, on, if you're <laughs> if high you're enough, passing out. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. If you're passing oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting horrible sleep. But yeah, it's like yeah. it's passing out. And then I I love wings so much, but I think it's just an age thing that I can't eat them late have to plan. and be able to sleep like yeah that's yeah. such a sad thing to sad. say out loud to have to put wings on to your be, calendar yeah, <laughs> you to put, yeah. To be like getting, calling your buddy like it's wing time at one o'clock in the afternoon like a couple trying to conceive you're like i'm i'm ovulating yeah. i know neither i know this isn't spontaneous in the least but we've got to do Come it on, now Mark. we've yeah. got to do it now the pepsi ac just kicked in <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. so sad. It's so brutal. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've been, I, I've been. Yeah, I don't know. I've just the the food hasn't really bothered. Sleep is always a problem on the road, anyway, though, for me, because it's just like, yeah, you're out. You're 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 just different noises. Yeah, you're the bed is different. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I have been. The more I'm on the road, the more I'm like, oh, you have to get a nice. Even if you just splurge on it and you make less on the weekend. It's your san. You're paying for your sanity. Oh, 100%. just get a good hotel because you know the first couple tours. It's like I'll sleep on floors. I'll do yeah, whatever. Just right. make, you know, you're only making a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. But now I'm just like got it. But even then, it's like it's just even then. It's just and the time zones. The worst thing is when you go east coast to west coast. Yeah. Your body wants to go to sleep at eight p.m. anyway. Yeah. Then you fight past that to do shows, mm-hmm. and then you're you got that post show adrenaline. So now the show ends at midnight. It's 3 a.m. your time. Yeah. You can't go to bed until 2 a.m. Yeah. And that's 5 a.m. your time. It's <laughs> right. just like, forget <laughs> yeah, about it. I know. Denver was great. Comedy Works, yeah. great club, had insanely great shows. But I was I was just, I felt fucked up. Right. You know? just, off the, just off the time <laughs> yeah. change. Uh, what, Comedy Works, you said? Yeah, but great yeah. shows, though. I mean, that, Also that, there, the, that is no joke going to that elevation. Elevation. You never too. feel good there, yep. ever. Yep. Even coming from the West Coast, just going from L.A. to that place. It's a weird week. Yeah, that's true. Thank God the club is like the best. Otherwise, it would be, it would if that gig was bad. Denver was bad. It would right. be really brutal. <laughs> yeah. It would yeah. be really brutal. The downtown club. I was in the downtown. Yeah, that's I did. A good spot. Mo- I did a couple in the downtown, then did one up 
in the landmark in the landmark east and that was great too yeah they got when they got the balcony and stuff it's awesome yeah it's yeah. such a well, yeah remember we did that show where it was the power went out oh remember? Yeah. yeah yeah for like three years in a row every time i went there something weird happened. <laughs> one time like a flood came in yeah one time yeah, the, the power flood. went out right? it was the flood that that fucked the electricity up because it wasn't the whole power right. it was just the the, the uh, mic the mics the only thing we need <laughs> yeah was the microphone so we're just out there like it's you know it was like shakespeare yeah <laughs> we were just out there it was weird yeah that was fucking strange I, I literally run into people though i have run into people they were like we were there the night you had no mic that's awesome yeah it was very memorable i'll remember that show for oh 100 yeah, percent. yeah just talking out loud like we're in theater <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really projecting i only had to do 20 minutes you were out there an hour yeah that's it worked tough. though yeah it was fun you didn't really need a microphone and it's a good again good room you know yeah kind of set up nicely feels like a theater oh it's the so, best it's yeah. the best yeah there's only a handful of clubs that i do anymore and that I'll never take that off the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, always the best. Yeah. I just saw Ali Wong was there just like doing like Tuesday, to Monday through Wednesday. Wow. Just, you know. Just working on stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. It's such a good environment. It really is. I had a blast. Um, how upset are you with Robert Kelly um, losing weight? Yeah, he she's a traitor. Yeah. Because you guys were pretty. <laughs> that was so funny because we worked together. Then you started working with Robert. Mm -hmm. And you were like. Uh, this is uh, gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you come into my green room and there's like some crudite. Uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm, a, I'm eating the <laughs> fruits. I'm like, oh, this is the first fruit I've had in weeks. <laughs> yeah, there's a fruit plate yeah, yeah. and a vegetable plate. <laughs> it was night and day. The flip week, and there was a couple years where it was basically I was either on the road with you or Bobby pretty much every weekend, yeah, yeah. and it goes from like you know. You you're coming in from L.A. We're getting salads for lunch. Yeah. You have crudite, and I would go with Bobby, and he's literally ordering eight entrees, <laughs> and he's like, "No, we're just gonna taste it." And it's like we before eat the it. show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we had there would be times where we're having full steak dinners, and it ends twenty minutes before the show, and and I'm like, "How are you? Oh my how God. do you do this? How do you just?" <laughs> And I was like, I can't complain. I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, I like the steak dinner. <laughs> yeah. He did. He he had to institute a. Uh, <laughs> he had to institute a. You're not allowed to have the last one. Or it was like he had he had to train me like a dog because <laughs> do I would just be like waiting for the appetizers to come. And he was uh -huh. like, I have to have one first because <laughs> I would just be like, <laughs> <laughs> he would listen. The guy has taste. He orders the best stuff. It's true. And so it was great. And I was just like, but yes. <laughs> Certainly not the influence when I needed allowed, when you were allowed. To. Literally, like a, <laughs> like, I felt a like a yeah, like a Dotson. <laughs> 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 it, was like, <laughs> it was just like I was just. He could tell because I would be high too. Yeah. After the show, I'm just like <laughs> staring at a dumpling, and he's like, "Not yet, <laughs> not yet." And he would do it like a trick, like when we're eating <laughs> with someone, like watch this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> good boy. Yeah. <laughs> And now he's losing all this weight. I know. I mean, good for him, honestly. But he did. He is a traitor to the the fraternity. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and he messed there. He put all these other people on the fatty path. He did. And he left the fatty. He path. did. He did. He really did. <laughs> he yes. That's well. That's really at the core. That is what Robert is. He's evil. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's been an elaborate it's been an elaborate practical joke yeah. to see how many comedians he can give diabetes before losing 150 pounds yeah. <laughs> if I'm going down everyone's going down yeah what's up with the ladies that was, uh, that was another thing I think one of the last gigs that we uh, got to do together I think was in Boston and uh, yeah, we were doing some yes. club in Boston maybe laugh Boston yeah and yes. uh and you were that's when like tinder yes was really starting to become no effective. i had i had a huge run in boston yeah i think i hooked up with a girl every time i was in boston you were almost catatonic backstage <laughs> yeah i was just, <laughs> just i didn't really understand what was happening yet <laughs> and you're just like so I mean, not yeah, now yeah. tom <laughs> It was like TikTok with real life oh, yes, consequences. With, real, with po the possibility of fucking the women in the, the yeah. poos pictures you saw. Yeah. Yeah, I was just... But that's the other thing. It's it's all it's all like um, <laughs> compulsive behavior, you mm -hmm. know, where it's like just hooking up becomes another one of those things. Right. Where you're just like, all right, let's fucking do but it. But you're not really an addict, right? Like you're never like... You never went into like the danger zone. Well, you quit drinking. Am I speaking up? Yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe there were... 
the first week where I like where I wasn't drinking or smoking or doing anything after uh-huh. doing it a lot, I was kind of like, you know, staying out late as hell, just yeah. trying to hook up. You know, there was like a week where I was like, what am I even doing? Uh-huh. Like, I don't even I don't even want to do this. Right. I'm just like, this is just so I'm not alone with my thoughts. Right. You know, which is really what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, who knows? Um, like with everything else, I'm trying to just be a little more, yeah. you know, just have a little bit more of a be more conscious about it and not just because because the you know because you can eat a couple M&Ms eat them because you can fuck some girl you know like right, with, yeah. because you can raw dog some woman in Massachusetts <laughs> doesn't mean you should <laughs> <laughs> but i wanna <laughs> but <laughs> what am i going to watch <laughs> yeah what i just go watch diners drive-ins and dives <laughs> again <laughs> yeah yeah, so I don't know. Are you okay with your own thoughts now? Are you I'm closer a, to them. You are? I'm closer to okay. I'm yeah. closer to okay. I mean, the reality is that's another th- nice thing about working all the time mm. is where you're just like, ah, I don't have to deal with this right now. Right. This There's no time to do Yeah. It, you know? So, yeah, that is but true. I, but I'm trying to get better at it because, you know, at a certain point you don't want to just... One thing I'm realizing is like, oh, if you get successful, you won't be happy. It's not a guarantee. It's like right. part of the thing, part of the recipe, but it's yeah. not everything. Your your problems don't go away. No. And then you see the rich people that are like, or like the super famous people that you're like, oh, there's a reason these people are the most insane. Now that you say it, it almost makes it, it makes the case for being just successful enough. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you're super successful. You don't want to be that. You're back to where you started. 100%. But if you're in that part where you could lose it at any moment. Right. Right. And it keeps you running. Absolutely. That's probably the sweet spot. It's a good spot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know. <laughs> it really is. It's kind of true. It's great. You don't want to be stopped on the street. You want to be able to go to a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't want people to be like, can I, you know. Yeah. Um, you just want the sandwich shop to be like, you can come watch us make the bread. That's it. That's all, that's all you need. <laughs> you need one need. guy. You need the cashier to know who you are and to slip you an extra sandwich <laughs> right. on the house. <laughs> And to be like, big fan, quietly. That's it. That's all you need. That's right. That's the fucking sweet spot. That's where I'm at right now. I don't need... I've said it before. If I could sign a contract that was like, I will just be this successful yeah. for the rest of my life, but yeah. never any more successful, yeah. I'd be like, done. I'm good. Give me a 40-year contract. I don't need anything more. Nothing less, yeah. but nothing more either. I would I would do it in a heartbeat. I'll live in a story the rest of my life yeah. in my rent control department for the rest of my life. I don't need a house. Are there relatives that look like you, like from your grandparents on even older, that like, like when I see you like on social media in like the last... I guess after the pandemic. Yeah. And I'd be like, and your hair's gotten longer. Right, right, And right, your right, belly's right. gotten a little bigger. Yes, you're just yes, like embracing yes. it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's that Greek guy. Yes, absolutely. That's the Greek guy who's just, yeah, you like to sit and have a coffee with, maybe a cigar. 100%. Like, uh, are there people in your family that have the same? They have the same look? No, I think, I don't think there's anyone who's fully unleashed it. The way that I have, <laughs> we'd have to know? go back to before we'd, photography. Yeah, <laughs> so, some Sailing lithographs. Vessels. Yeah, <laughs> some guy out there with nets. <laughs> absolutely, but I, yeah, there's definitely. I mean, um, this is absolutely like a a real for a real Greek look that I'm that I'm going. With yeah, now. it works. You know, the, well, you just you bring up the little out. black hat. The little black hat's the, the final piece. The yeah, black it hat. really is. Start smoking cigarettes, <laughs> <laughs> then then we're in the little beads. Are you having? I'm picturing um, you having more just young people of different whatever nationality and whatever showing up. Yeah. But do you have Greek people showing up? I think it's starting a little bit. Because I remember there were a couple Greek acts like, yeah. when I first started. And if the Greeks find out that you're Greek, they show up. Yeah. You I, could be the Sebastian of the Greeks for is what sure. I'm saying. Well, that's the thing. It's like a little bit. That's definitely happening. There, I have been, especially early in my career, I was very conscious not to be those people you mm-hmm. know what i mean because you don't want to sebastian i think is a is is not a he's just a good comic uh-huh. you know but it's like there are people there's definitely greek people that were like you know they they make their money selling dvds at greek festivals you know right. what i mean They're, like they, they they tour all they've got is i'm greek exactly exactly right. and so for very early on i didn't do that now i'm kind of um organically come and even sure. on my last special there was a few jokes about being greek and about my family but it was from a very it was really my perspective yeah and it's like listen if and i know greek people can relate it's just stuff that 
most Greek comics, it's like, well, you know, yeah, just like, well, Sebastian does that too. Like, it's not, yeah, he talks about stuff that's very Italian, but it's stuff that everybody gets. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and I just want to. Mine is a little more like. I'm being a little, I think, a little less polite about the whole immigrant thing. It's just like, you know, I'm putting on blast what pieces of shit, you know, immigrants can be. You know what I mean? Right. The racism, the like, you know, uh -huh. the just the, you know, just the just the some shallowness, some, you know, all that all that kind of yeah. stuff. And it's like, yeah, if you want to hop on board with that and admit <laughs> and admit that your immigrant father was probably also a piece of shit, that you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Your immigrant dad probably also was just withholding, you know, emotions and not just the like, boy, we sure do love to eat, don't we? You know, <laughs> yeah, that kind of shit. Right. It's like, which everyone does, by the way. Yeah. Um yeah. so yeah, it's happening a little bit though for sure. And a lot yeah. of like Baltimore, I started doing just like these little videos about the ravens uh -huh. and it's crazy how many people from baltimore just like really just a, a local fan base is kind of i can't like when i go home that's the only place i feel famous because uh -huh. they're just like they're just like oh yeah you're from the ravens they don't know anything else oh really they know the ravens videos which i do once a week after the ravens lose i do a character so. that's hilarious i know it is it is really you never know what the fuck is gonna make people yeah that's um, great no but you really i i say lean into it because it is your culture and yeah it will naturally come and you're very conscious that you start making sure that you're not pandering keeping yourself in right check. right but now you're you're there and you're writing and you're you should definitely do it because, look, the Greeks came for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My no. name. They were like, "That are you Greek? Tell yeah. us you're Greek. Please <laughs> tell us you're Greek." But that's the funny thing is like I don't think I even have to do anything because yeah. my name is Stavros. You know, they right. know I'm Greek. Exactly. They would come see me if I was you know what doing whatever. Yeah. I do have plenty of Greek people come and just even if it's not their you know genre of stand up it's yeah. like they are fans because you're just a greek guy right who's just in the you know yeah like oh. zach alfanakis every greek right old greek guys you think they fucking know about alt <laughs> comedy no but between they were like two hey ferns. is that you know what i mean that's <laughs> yeah. us you know yeah between two ferns they don't, yeah <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they don't get ironic <laughs> ironic interview shows but they were fucking huge yeah. zach g fans <laughs> it's amazing so i think they're, they're they're definitely starting to come out though for sure that's good yeah, and it's interesting. YouTube, people like people you just don't expect. Because when I had the podcast, it was all like, honestly, just like you know, young white guys, yeah, two online, those kinds of guys, you know. Yeah, and, and what we, was that podcast called again? Come Town, Come Town, right? Yes, I yes, remember yes. it was something that we couldn't say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out. I and it was great. We had a good run, you know. We had it was very it funny, was successful, right? Super successful, very yeah. fun. And but it's you know, it's like at a certain point you just want to do the next thing, something new, something different. Yeah, you know, I wanted to do my own thing. I also want to do. I think all of us have gotten a little stale with it creatively, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, just do some, do the next thing. Right. And it was great, and those fans are awesome, and they still come. A lot of them still come out uh -huh. to the shows, and I'm always grateful for that. But it's like, um, yeah, with YouTube, it's like. People you just don't expect come out, just like, just like a old couple on date night. You know what I mean? Like just uh -huh. like you know, two <laughs> two like fifty year old Latinos. You right. know what I mean? That are like that are like How we watch you your me? we watch your videos every day on YouTube. It's just like YouTube has just become TV. Is mm -hmm. the reality? We all everyone right. in comedy and entertainment still thinks about like TV, right? And he, and movies maybe are a little different because a, a good movie is still like can still affect and don't get me wrong a hit tv show is still awesome this is the best thing you could have mm -hmm. but a re just an okay tv show i would rather have a big youtube channel than just be on a yeah. tv show that does fine but no is no one's favorite you know right and so i think i i think a lot of people have just shifted to watching youtube when they're flipping channels right that's flipping channels now it's going through youtube it's not getting cable it's not right. even Netflix. Netflix, you go if you want to watch something specific. Right. But I think a lot of people just fuck around on YouTube. Yeah. And they just... I, I keep... We were just talking about that earlier, that it's like... And I guess you're kind of answering it. It's like, I always think, like, who of, like, really popular podcasts that blow up on YouTube, they all seem... In the comedy world, they all seem very bro-y. They all... They <laughs> yeah, seem, yeah, Right? Yeah. It's all like that kind of... Uh, that kind of thing. And if you put those guys on your podcast, on my podcast... Like most people, like those are the highest numbers we get. Right, right, right. But it's got to be more than just that on YouTube. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to be bigger I than think just, just... I think it's just pure numbers. I think people, Yeah. I think just everyone watches YouTube now. Right. It used to be like people would age out of it, or right. it's like old people wouldn't watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like, now I think 
everyone watches. YouTube has just become TV. Yeah. In a way that everyone has YouTube. Right. Not everyone has cable. Not everyone has every streamer. Right. Everyone's got fucking YouTube. You know what? That's what my, my father was just visiting, and we were wanted to watch some some sporting event or whatever, and we couldn't find it on DirecTV. My father's like, I'm watching it right here on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my mom would watch old Greek movies that were just on YouTube. Right. And that, and then she gets in the algorithm and she gets into the habit. Right. And now she's just like, well, watch stuff. She'll, they'll watch Greek TV shows. They'll watch snippets on YouTube. Right. Instead of like yeah. having to subscribe to the satellite channel that costs how much money. Yeah. Or like this is free. Re reruns of mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, I don't know. It's cool though. It's, yeah. it's sick because it's like people that. It is sick. That I wouldn't have ever. Would have never found out about me. Yeah. You know, and it's like these dumb little videos, and they're like, this is cool. We'll see. And it's like translated to, and I'm sure there's so many other people that maybe aren't coming out to a show, but are still watching. Yeah. Which is also awesome. It really is insane, isn't it? It's like just, just show up anywhere. Yeah. Like I literally this morning had someone come up and was like, at the sandwich shop, was like, I knew, I know you from NPR. And then I yeah, was at this yeah, thing yeah. earlier, and she's like, I, I just, I learned about you from TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> In my old, in my old head, it's thinking, what could be more split apart of than course. NPR and TikTok? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's not that far it's really apart not. at all. No, 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 absolutely not. It's not. It's, it's wild. Yeah. It's it's re yeah. It's 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 very interesting because it's like I think we have a relationship to social media shit where it's like we have to do it for the job mm -hmm. and it's kind of a bigger burden but it's yeah. like if you're just going to have a good time i'm sure it could be a lot more fun right than when you're like oh i have to I have move to some pose. tickets so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have to post it's like i have to do this shit constantly where it's like like my mom i don't think even posts anything I yeah think she just like has a thing to keep up with her friends and like you know right maybe watch something right you know, every once in a while yeah do you think um you said that uh if you could level out this level of success, you'd be good. If you could sign yeah, that contract, that'd be awesome. Um, what about for your life? Do you do you feel like there's going to be little Stavroses one day? That's or a good you, question. Because it's uh, yeah, you got to be thinking about it. I somewhat. am thinking about it a little bit because it's the first. My best friend. So I moved here. She we lived together first apartment. Like we've been friends since we were kids. She had a kid recently, and it was the uh, first like, you know, I've had friends, friends, but not. But she's like, you know, family, you know, family, and it's like to see like a kid where you're like, wow, she had a fucking kid. Like, she's yeah, like, she was the first one to move to New York when we were like, I was 19, she was like 22 or whatever. She just said, fuck it, I'm moving. She's always kind of been the first one mm -hmm. to be at the next level of life, and it's like, I. I kind of wonder, like, is that kind? Is she dragging the rest of the friend group into being like, you know, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and it is true. Now. The older you get, it's like your friend, your friends kind of set the pace for what kind of life you want to have. Yeah. And and when you do comedy, you could fucking, this is a fake life. Right. Like, I go home, I went home to visit my brother, and all his friends have kids. Yeah. You know, all he's he's married. Right. And I, I went there, I was like, I'm thinking, damn, my brother's a little young. And I'm like, he's a 31-year-old man. He's not young. <laughs> right. You're old. He would have been retiring yeah, yeah. in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, he, but in comedy in New York, yeah. it's 31. is like, he's a baby. Yeah, he's just you getting know? started. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. Good for him. He's walking. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> so that, that kind of shook me out of the whole like, oh, yeah, you're not. And you also don't want to be yeah. one of those guys that's like trying to be cool when he's forty. Yeah, you don't want to be a guy with like plugs trying to fuck the hostess. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. trying to get her in your Dancing Maserati. In front of the speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Suck. That shit sucks. Showing like a nineteen-year-old yeah. girl your like crypto portfolio <laughs> oh. to impress her. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be fucking that. So it's just no. like, and so you know, we'll see. It's yeah. nice that a lot of my. Like my brothers are married, my cousin's getting married, my you know my best friend, another one of my friends in a serious relationship. Yeah, it's like you're like, oh yeah. Th first of all, if I were to continue living kind of how I am, it's like I'd have to get what twenty five year old friends. <laughs> I have to like <laughs> yeah. that's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. I just surround myself a bunch of, and pretend I'm their age. Hey, you're right. You see that guy, and I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> pretend so like, that you watch the same host of Blues Clues. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a fucking Steve guy. I don't know who came after Steve. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think I think it's that is another thing about being on the road so much and working so much. I'm like, for what? 
Who yeah. gives a fuck? Right. It's like, okay, I now I'm at the place where I can afford everything. It was nice. I didn't grow up with money. Yeah. Now if I want something, I just get it. Right. That's nice. Yeah. But it's not like, but then ultimately what's the whole point? Yeah. And then you're like, well, yeah, I guess some family shit would be nice. That's the next thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll start probably with just trying to have a solid relationship. I have, right. you know, I've had a couple okay ones but uh-huh. it's like i've always been a little immature and i've always been so worried about my career where now it's like yeah all right this shit's pretty settled why don't yeah. you work on you as a human being <laughs> there might be room for yeah, another part exactly yeah so that would be cool I, I literally i remember i was coming home back i was on the road for like four weeks in a row <laughs> and i was like oh, i'm tired i wish it would be nice for somebody just like if i like got home and like there was like food and the apartment was clean and i was like Maybe I'd get a roommate again and they could do that. And you know what? I could get like a roommate. I wouldn't they wouldn't have to pay rent. Like I'm doing well. <laughs> it's like, why a roommate though? It should be like a girl that I like. Yeah. Just, I could have a girlfriend who does that. She would she wouldn't have to pay rent. And I was just like, I've just invented a fifties <laughs> housewife. Uh, right. I, just, I was like a woman who stays in my house and cleans and cooks me dinner. And she doesn't even have to pay for anything because I'm doing pretty well these days. And I was she like, loves oh, me is taking care of her yeah. child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you just want, that's yeah. you just invented the thing that was how society worked for thousands of years until like 15 years ago. Right. So I don't know. So yeah, I think there is something to getting older and just, seeing all that stuff where yeah like, yeah yeah you know and ultimately the tinder shit is like it's not fulfilling to fuck a bunch of strangers right who cares is it still going is tinder still a thing i don't know i'm not really on the no. on the apps that much no mostly if anything it's like the it's like i feel like social media functionally serves as a dating app where mm-hmm. it's like you know you dm someone whatever right that's kind of kind of how it happens right but is it I, still as random still is it still as random what do you mean like, do girls hook up as randomly as... Yes. Because like, it wasn't, like, you know, before all of that. Right. You know, it wasn't really the way the world worked. I th- I see what you're saying. Is Has there been a backlash to just... Uh, has there been a normalization? Did it swing too far to the fuck yeah, whoever? Right. I still think there's plenty of people out there who are fucking whoever. And right. then it's like, you know... But I think I'm a little out of... I think maybe I want to get out of there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like... It's like you can't do that forever. Yeah. And it's also just not fulfilling. You just want to like, you know. Right. You just want to watch a whole show with someone. Right. You don't want to you don't want to be three different places uh-huh. on one show with three different women. You know what I mean? You don't want to have to be pretending you're still on episode 2 when you watched 5 with somebody else, you didn't know. We, we saw this already. Yeah. Didn't we? yeah. Oh, right. No, I definitely did. Why are we always a season ahead of 30 Rock when I come over? I don't know. I just watch it sometimes. <laughs> so i don't know man do you have a break coming up going into the holidays uh a going? little bit i have going hard i have a little bit of a break after so i'm putting out a podcast stavi's world nice tell yeah, me about that it's fun it's a um it's like a interview it's like an interview and advice show so it's like oh yeah i did it during the pandemic i did like a little uh, did like a twitch show where uh-huh. people would call in and I would just, you know, kind of shit on them, but also solve their problems. <laughs> right. And I, I would do it with guests sometimes. And so I'm just trying to, like, adapt that into, like, a something that I could do. Because I did that show live, and it's just, like, it's easier to pre-record a bunch of podcasts uh-huh. when you're on the road. So I just kind of right. want to have them ready. So I didn't want to do a live version. So I have a different version of that where I've turned a room in my house into a little podcast studio. Oh, my nice. friends come in. You know, I had Sam Morell, Ian Fidance, Mateo. Marie Faust, just a lot of really, really funny people. Nice. Joe List. And, you know, we, we kind of get into their things for a little bit. We, we, we fuck around a little bit. And then people call in for the next last half of the show. And we kind of, you know, solve their problems, but also bust their balls a little bit. And nice. it's, it's fun. It's just like a fun show. Yeah, so that's good. I'm promoting that for the next couple of weeks. And then Christmas, through the, through the first couple of weeks of January, I'm taking completely off. Nice. And then... Back to tour, The Fat Rascal Tour. <laughs> starts starts in earnest some theaters nice. um it's selling well but it's like it's going to be a kind of a sprint from february to may and at the end i'm going to record the next special nice and then and you did that through youtube i just put it on myself yeah, yeah. through youtube so great so the next one who knows i'd like to you know 
be nice to get a Netflix special. Talk to your boys for me, right, Tommy? Let them oh know. God, let them know I said what's I'll up. See what I can do. <laughs> I'll see what I can. You do. know, I'm just saying the cookies. Maybe we ran out of flour next hey, year. Hey, you hey, know, you, you tell your mother <laughs> there's a fire you in the tell kitchen. Tell your mother if we, if we were to happen to get two tents this year, maybe someone's going to see her boy do yeah. very well. <laughs> I'll send. I'll send the whole the whole corporate office at Netflix. They get tins. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's I put it out and uh, I put it out myself, but it was, which was really cool. It was nice. Wait, how did you get the tin of cookies? What do you mean? Like, how did you get the tin of cookies? Like, we just decided to do this. Did you go home to get them? No, I just got back Thanksgiving. I got a whole. I was actually going to start mailing cookies off because uh, I want to take that off my mom's she's, plate. She's doing it that early. Yeah. Wow. She's getting ready. She's a machine. Because, you know, la sometimes in the past, it would be like some people would get their cookies after Christmas and uh -huh. it's, or after New Year's. And it's like people are like, hey, thanks, but. I'm fat now. <laughs> yeah. I needed, I wanted these the two weeks. So I wanted to be like, this year, you got it. We're going <laughs> nice. to, we'll give it to you right in the like guilt free zone. Yeah. December, this is the good eat whatever spot. the fuck you want. Yeah. Giving, giving people cookies on January 3rd is like kind of rude. <laughs> yeah. It really they're is. trying to turn their life around. They're like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, this right now is the sweet spot. Right here is where you're like, it, there's no trying to correct this. No. Let's just go and Let's enjoy go. it. Full force. Yeah. We'll we'll <laughs> we'll wake up hungover on January. Like that's what it is. Yeah. This is the party. January is the yeah. wake up, see what the damage the is. The hangover. Absolutely. The self reflection, the regret. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So I can't wait. I can't wait for the little break. I'm going to go. I'm going to work out with my little brother. He's a trainer. He's got his own gym nice. in Maryland. So Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's cool. Really? If you ever want to work out in Maryland, man. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want my brother to put you through through the paces. That's <laughs> eh, uh, okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> eh, right. Do you belong to a gym here? I do. You do? I got a gym in a story that I go to. Nice. Um, I was working out this morning. We That's Sweet. how they started. That's right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I go. It's nice when I get to be home. Yeah, I'm actually my habits are good when I'm home. I'm just never home. I went to Costco. There's a Costco. I, yeah. I meal prepped this week. I had these turkey burgers ready to go. <laughs> oh, chicken breast marinated. That's awesome. Big pot of rice. Some broccoli all cut up. I kind of do the opposite. Where well, at least with drinking. Where when I'm home, I drink more. Wow, interesting. When I'm on the road, I'm just. What does that say about your relationship to your family? <laughs> <laughs> it says everything. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking more when you're a road comic is hysterical. Drinking more when you're home. I don't drink at all on the road anymore. That's crazy. Then, I, yeah. then you come home it's when totally you're comfortable. Flipped. I'm like, ah, the people you love. Yeah. <laughs> Leave daddy alone. <laughs> well, your kids are what? Your kids are about to be college age. Yeah. They're, yeah. You, you see that they're about to be adults. You mm -hmm. can't really have any. You just got to be. My job is gotta done. Gotta trust them. My job is done. That's, the only that's way, stressful. The only though. way to convince yourself that uh, you're not, the only way to be comfortable with the fact that you're no longer in charge of their lives, right, is to be drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. When they're when they're getting yeah, that's tough. That's yeah. a tough transition psychologically. Yeah. Because you know they're dumb. You know they're not ready for it. You know the world is mean. You know how fucked up the world is yeah. and like what what you have subjected them to without their <laughs> they didn't sign on as fetuses. <laughs> they are just like, I guess I'm fucking born now, thanks. I guess I gotta put together a resume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, fuck. <laughs> now it's about to get real. I thought it was gonna be all Christmas trees uh, and, and candy canes. Yeah. Now it's uh time for you to put together a resume yeah. and get out there and make it. And just things will go bad. You just know that's how the world is. Yeah, it's it'll all, be horrible. It's all filled with good yeah. and bad. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm drunk. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Keep the whiskeys coming. <laughs> what do you drink? Anything specific? Uh, if when I'm home, it's uh, the cocktail is a martini, a kettle mm. one martini, straight okay. up with olives, very dry. Look at you, a little smoking jacket in the house. <laughs> I do have a smoking jacket. <laughs> I don't break it out all the time. But I do have a That's smoking awesome. jacket. And uh, red wine. Nice. Red wine. Yeah. Really good red wine. Red wine's good. Yeah. That's the way to go. Yeah. I now like know what I'm drinking and uh, can really enjoy it. That's um, huge. And I just... I, I, the, the only way I can tell where I'm at is... When I get off the couch, how big of a head rush? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> if you get up and you're like, Whoo. how wobbly is the walk to the oh, bathroom? Yeah, okay. What yeah. did I have tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's great. And I man. still buy weed, but uh, hardly ever have, have time to smoke it. Yeah. I just like the ability to buy it. It's nice that it's there it. if you have it. But uh, it really just doesn't fit my life anymore. It's so sad. <sighs> that is sad. I, I'm much eating chicken wings at one and no longer smoking uh, weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1 p.m. Eating chicken wings in the daylight. Uh, yeah, no yeah. longer smoking <laughs> weed. That's free everywhere. That's where my life is at. I know. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? You'll get back to You'll get back to weed. There'll be a big weed resurgence later in life. I can feel it. Yeah, probably. When I really feel like I don't need my brain that yeah, much dude. anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to. I can Bonnie feel, McFarlane oh. has a very funny joke about that. She just worked with me. And she said something about uh, that's what, about how there's no going back. It's too late with climate change. It's all over. <laughs> the, 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 the end of times is near. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they're making weed legal. They're yeah. like, here's your end of times drug. <laughs> right, just right, enjoy right. yourself, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have a good time. It's a little. It's the apocalypse gift basket, <laughs> right? It's, 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 it's just insanely strong weed, right? Wherever exactly. you want it, just anesthetize yourselves. Yeah. And you can gamble too, by the way. Gamble <laughs> right. off your phone. Get high. Gamble. Feel something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll all be over soon. Just shut your eyes. Just shut your eyes. Rest for a while. <laughs> yeah, Bonnie's great. I love her. She's so, so funny. funny. So funny. So when is the new podcast going to come out? It actually comes out. It might. I don't know when this comes out, but the podcast comes out uh, December fifth. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So, cool. So like, go listen to that. That's very cool. Yep. I like the way that you tried to get me to do it by saying I could go to one of my favorite bakeries around the corner. It's around the corner. Don't They're, say what it is so it, that no one knows that where I live. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know. I won't say the name of it. It yeah. is a good spot. Do you ever go there? I go sometimes, but I try. It's tough because it's just there's nothing even remotely good healthy. There. No, you know? no. So I go... I you go, mean the bread with the round bread with the prosciutto with the prosciutto, prosciutto <laughs> baked... Cheese and prosciutto baked I always remember it. you... I have that picture of you walking down the snowy street. <laughs> yeah. Just eating it like it was a donut. Well, we, so we weirdly... I don't know how our travel yeah, got fucked so up. that was so bizarre. But we just didn't get a chance to eat. And also, we were going, for some reason, from one gig and then out to Newark, we were like literally going past your house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's where that bakery was. Yes, cuz you're going to the yes, it was in Newark and the bakery was happened to be a couple blocks away. That's right. But we also hadn't eaten, so we 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 get these hunks of bread and we're just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a giant loaf of I bread. I think we were like, "Oh, we'll stop, we'll have time," but it started snowing. Right. It was just bizarre. Yeah. It was further than we thought. Right. And it was just like we had a, it was a strange day. It was a fun day, but it was a, it was strange, a strange day. day. It was real cuz I I asked you, "Can we stop?" That's right. I asked you do you mind if we stop at this bakery on the way from Long Island to New Jersey? Right. Because I know them. I put them in my Food Network show, and I want to go stop. And you're like, yeah. um, I'm around the corner. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. That's, that's my That's where home. my apartment <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the weird part. That was very weird. But I just I have this great picture of you, this prosciutto bread, which is like a, like a wreath, like a Christmas wreath. Great. I still get cheese that Cheese and prosciutto. Yeah. And you were just eating it like it was like a cookie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was hungry. What can I say? Oh, well, that was this, good. Well, this was great. Anything you want to ask me? We haven't caught up in a while. Anything uh, you, that you're curious about? I am curious, we, but you know, we got through. We got through your life pretty good. I'm just wondering about. I mean, I honestly happy am happy for your success. Thank you, Tommy. It's all good. I am. I mean, I you know, we can do it on the pod. We can do it off the pod. I'm mostly curious about. I am. We hinted at it, but I am curious about like how you how you are dealing with that. Like the kids out of the. That's a. Even when we were working together, it was like on the horizon. Yeah, and it was like you know where are your kids going to go to school. Where yeah. you know, like I'm it was all I'm, starting to. Yeah. yeah, and now I feel like you're you got to be in the thick of it. So I am very curious about like it's a different stage for sure. You're def you're all of a sudden that couple that lived across the street whose kids were grown. Right. And you were had right. your little kids playing on the yard. And you're like, well, how do they spend their time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I'm, yeah, now we're in that mode. Are they gone? Are the kids gone? One's one? in school and okay. one's on her way to school. Wow. And uh, yeah, I was just telling my friend Nicole that uh, we really didn't plan it well because, like, we love New York. We're in LA. The kids are going off and doing their thing. Why not just get an Airbnb and come back to New York for three straight months and yeah. do sets and just have a good time and be totally in the place that we love. And, uh, but we have these dogs that are still mm. alive and, uh, we didn't time out their death uh, the right way. That's brutal. Yeah. So I guess I'm going to have to come here by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 
old dog shit you want to swap? <laughs> yeah. I'll come live in your house. Well, I'll go to LA, uh, do some meetings. <laughs> uh, we got people for that. <laughs> come on. Let's see how this new sobriety, <laughs> see if it sticks or not. <laughs> see if you meet that nice young girl. And okay. <laughs> uh, you'll allow me once I have a girlfriend just to have shit. Probably a shrewd move on your behalf. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of valuable things there. <laughs> uh, but no, but it is, uh, it's definitely, you know, there's these moments in your life where you were all part, we're all playing from the same brochure. Yeah. And like your friend who's has their kids, it's like, oh shit, this is that chapter's here now. Yeah, yeah. Whether yeah. you like it or not, you've got to kind of deal with whether you're participating or not, you're in that stage now. Your people are in that stage yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And we're all going from the same handbook. And my handbook, I'm at that part yeah. where like there's actually grown kids. And there's parts of it that are very cool. Like sure. I love being able to like see them as adults and yeah. sit and talk to them as adults. You get to hang out with them as adults. Yeah. These people that you made yeah. are now their own thing, but that means you get to enjoy them as a separate entity instead of just kind of dependent on you, which they have been. Yeah, and, you, and then you got to, you know, then you digest it and figure it out and find out how you're going to handle that stage right. of the handbook. Right. And then you see your parents and you're like, well, that part of the handbook will come soon, yeah. someday also. And yeah. I'm going to be, you know, it's so, you know, you just ride them all out. It's very interesting. Like we just have all these different phases and you can bring your own, your own vibe and your own mentality to it and try and make it and do it the coolest way that you can and, sure. and be open and loving and, you know, smart about it and maybe, you know, vary from what you've learned somewhat, but also take some of the lessons. Yeah. Um, you can definitely put your own stamp on all these stages, but you're, uh, but there is no avoiding the stage. Yeah. Well, that's what's so interesting is that even talking to you about this, it's like, and what I've kind of realized is like, no one thinks they are the age that they are. No. Everyone feels 10 years younger than they actually are. At least. Are, you know? And At it's like, least. you're never prepared for any part of it. No. Nope. That's what ever. That's what has become so clear to me, because I'm like, wow, so every 30-year-old I met, every 33-year-old, yeah. they felt how I feel now. Right. And to me, it's like, they were just adults they were just like you know yeah, they it's were like grown ups. they were grown-ups you yeah. know and it's like they were just pe and it's like no no your teachers it's like yeah, yeah. i i've hooked up with teachers and i'm like <laughs> this is what my teachers were doing they were just fucking some guy and getting <laughs> right? fucked up doing drugs in a guy's hotel room and then like uh, so do, do you got what what color is a fox you know and it's, like, it's like we were just fucking you know she was yeah. all blasted out of her mind on edibles and it's just like yeah it's just like that does yeah. blow your mind because you have this perception when you're young yeah. that everyone knows and no one has anything figured out. Not at all. And it's like when it's someone, only on reflection that you understand that yeah. phase you were going through. Which is fun, yeah. And you, you come never, into it thinking you got your shit together. Right. You think, I got this. <laughs> right, right. And you look back, you're like, what was I doing? <laughs> yeah. I was panicked. Why did I behave at all at like that? Yeah. Crazy. I was so wrong. It's like that's the thing of having two kids is like you go you you have that face twice mm. or, you know, wh whatever number you have, you're going to go through it again. Right. And like, I thought I was really chill with the first one and really like, Oh, I, I've got this. And I was in control. And then the second one comes through and you're like, Oh, I was losing my mind yeah. <laughs> the first time my daughter got on a bicycle. Right. Right. Or right, like, right. you know, like I was, I thought I was chill, but yeah, no, not even. And then close. also the personality differences when you have kids where it's like, you think you're ready. And then the second one throws you a complete curveball. Yeah. Nothing. Like, oh, they're, they're not the same. Yeah. <laughs> they're not exactly the same. I have to, <laughs> these methods don't work on this one. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. worked on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But that is the funny, that is the strange kind of thing about life is that you have these, there's, you're, it's almost like you're in the ocean and you're getting hit with all these little waves, little waves, little waves. And then every 10 or so years, you get hit with a tsunami. Right. And then, and there's certain ones that you can't, avoid like the death of a parent or right, right, right. or like the birth of somebody or like you know losing somebody or any of the loss or, or any of that stuff those waves get so big yeah then you definitely there's also a part of you that you have to be okay with knowing 
you have no control. <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, that yeah, is like sure. think about how you're trying to dial in all this stuff and do your career and you're, right. you're eating right. And, do this. and you do, and you do. And then something comes along, and all of a sudden, you have no, you have no more base. There's no more uh, groundwork for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. You just it, have to. It's pretty. It. You got to be pretty fearless to be a person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one chose it. None of us were like, "This is what I want to do." We were just yeah. born. And by the yeah. time you know what the fuck's going on, you're no, you're ten. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. I really want to talk about that now in my act that my daughters have to go get resumes. Yeah. <laughs> that really is so funny. Wait, they, 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 it's, this is fun. We had Christmas trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to Disney World. And, yeah, yeah. Now that shit's over. It's over. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. What are your skills? Yeah. How useful? <laughs> you're right. How can you make some rich guy even more money? <laughs> you're right. Otherwise, you're fucking. You have no value. And Will he like write you a letter of recommendation? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Uh, tough. It'll all work out. Yeah. Well, thank you for the cookies. Of course. This is very exciting. This this, this worked out great so much you. better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> great to see you, man. You too. And yeah. um, well, good luck with the uh, the podcast. Thank you. Come on. We, we you got it. I know it's in Queens, but we're going to have you on sometime. I'll bribe you out there. Sometime. Yeah. The bakery's still there. Bakery's if still there. If they're still in business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. All right. All right. There you go. You guys got a great podcast. I got a box of cookies from Stavros' mom. So we all win. (laughs) Go check out my special. Go check it out. It's on Netflix. Tell your friends about it. Spread the word. It's much appreciated. I'm very happy with it. And I hope that you get to enjoy it and are happy with it as well. And uh, also go to TomPapa.com. Look up my tour, my dates for 2023. The first half, pretty much are on sale right now i'm going to chicago i'm going to denver big show in denver at the paramount i'm going to the kennedy center in dc lots of great shows all in the new year but for now just concentrate on the special you guys are the best thank you very much thank you to stavros and we'll see you next time